Today is February 23rd, 2023. Welcome to Native Calgarian. Oki, Naganago, Megoche, Chase Tokomaki, or Dakots Nagotine Siku. My name is Red Thunder Woman. My married English name is Michelle Robinson, and I use she and her pronouns. My Dene lineage roots me in the land of the Great Bear Lake tribe in Treaty 11. My name is Dakots Nagotine. My people wore rabbit skin, so it's been referred to as the land of the hair people. I'm a native to Turtle Island, and my Dene Nation is a visitor to this area of Pincho Tine Indehe in Satu Dene, meaning many big dog town, named after the Calgary Stampede. I was born in Calgary or in Blackfoot Mokinstis, as Michelle Elliott, an English name that has afforded me privilege in an English colonial world. My mother is Northern Slavey Dene or Satu Dene, but my Indian Act and Post status card by the Canadian government says Yellow Knives Dene. Through my father, I'm a daughter of the Mayflower and a daughter of the American Revolution while having a Canadian Indian Act and Post status card, which is a colonial construct by Canadian policies meant to divide Indigenous peoples' inherent rights. Indigenous Two-Spirit or the Indigenous 2S LGBTQ plus community and Indigenous women are at the bottom of the Canadian socioeconomic ladder because of colonial trauma, imposed poverty, racism, gendered violence, and land theft. I do not speak on behalf of all Indigenous, but I just shared my road as I go down the red road. As a Dene woman who has attempted to run for um, harmful colonial parties, spent money to be at expensive conventions, left my home to travel to those conventions just to vote on incomplete policies that still allow for the incarceration, denial of justice, denial of health services, racism, colonial trauma, underfunding and genocide of Indigenous and Black peoples, I have work to continue, reports to advocate for, and attempt to work within these systems meant to harm me and my community. I think of all of this today, and I hope we honor the many Indigenous lives lost for the so-called country in Canada. I hope you see your role in the importance of stopping harm, and as a citizen, see your role as a treaty partner and in reconciliation. Pride Month should never just be one month. It is important to understand that the straight agenda and gendered violence was and is forced on these lands by Christian outsiders. Land acknowledgements are critical for creating a safer space for Indigenous, as well as honoring the host as a guest, acknowledging your role as a treaty partner in a so-called time of reconciliation. It's important land acknowledgements have meaning. I encourage you all to introduce yourselves, acknowledging your ancestors, stories of dis displacement, how you perceive your role as a Treaty 7 partner, a citizen of Canada, a refugee or other land displacement, so we as Indigenous people know how safe you are to be around. If you won't pronounce your Indigenous nations' names, won't pronounce your pronouns, story of origin, acknowledge stolen lands, acknowledge imposed economic oppression, or your role in reconciliation, I determine how safe you are to be around my family, my community, and myself. Understanding land acknowledgements and their importance is Indigenous 101 because it immediately addresses colonialism, oppression dynamics, broken treaties, and lies taught today in Canadian schools nationally. That's why settlers and those who call themselves native Calgarians or whatever town you're from, show me you don't understand indigenous people or land theft or all, all those things. Jesse Winty's book on Unreconciled explains it perfectly as do many indigenous authored books. Land back is a movement that could save the planet from climate change created by colonialism, but it would also be a part of a treaty partnership, part of meaningful reconciliation and honoring global initiatives like the United Nation Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I honor the Blackfoot as the elders and members have been kind to me on my Red Road journey. Elder Red Crane taught me how to pronounce my spirit name in Blackfoot and Leonard Kenny taught me how to pronounce my spirit name in Satu Dene. My humblest apologies to the Blackfoot, Dene, language keepers, and elders as I try to learn proper pronunciation. I always joke that they say, oh, you're putting the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. And that's like a line out of Mike Myers. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm speaking to you on the lands of the Nitsitapi, which is the Blackfoot Confederacy. The Blackfoot south and the imposed can U.S. Canadian border are the Blackfeet. North of the border are the Siksika, Gainai, and Bagani of the Confederacy. These lands are Treaty 7, signed in 1877 with signatures that include the Blackfoot Confederacy and the Wesley Chiniki Bears Paw Chiefs of the Stony Nations and the Dene from Sutina. I acknowledge all First Nation, Métis, Inuit, status and non-status across Turtle Island as the keepers of these lands. All non-Indigenous are treaty partners with the government signing on your behalf. My Patreon account is Native Calgarian where you can pledge and support. Thank you previous donors for showing your support. If you value listening or watching and can afford to give, thank you. 
to those who cannot afford to give, I'd just like to hear from you at nativeyyc at gmail.com where you can send in your comments or questions. Also, giving a review helps whatever medium you're listening from. I have a YouTube channel. You can go and subscribe and you can go to nativecalgarian.com for the latest podcasts and pin posts on social media. So I am so excited to have some great folks here that are here to promote a yet another podcast and a good one at that one. So I'm going to let Adam introduce himself first and then we'll move it over to Lyndon. Hey, yeah, thank you, Michelle. That was a great introduction and I was uh, feeling inspired uh, even as I was listening to it. Um, Dr. My name is uh, Adam Murray. Um, I'm a, uh, I have of Ukrainian, Irish, and Cherokee Apache descent. Um, I, uh, I was born in Oregon. I, I grew up in uh, a little kind of Mexican town in Los Angeles. Uh, my dad's folks had moved from Oklahoma to LA and then from LA to Oregon and then came back down to LA. And so I, I spent, um, uh, a lot of my uh, time there uh, in the hood, uh, but uh, around a bunch of uh, beautiful people. Um, I would have been, I guess, uh, just like another, uh, you know, uninvolved story, another disconnected story, except for uh, two of my family members were really active in urban Indian uh, advocacy. And, uh, specifically, my aunt, Judy Wiley, she has been working for Native families with children with disabilities for about 30 years. And then uh, my old man, um, before he, uh, changed the nature of his journey last year. Uh, we used to put on uh, uh, powwows down in the Southern California area, uh, one in the spring, one in the fall. We had a, one for the Northern Drum, one for the Southern Drum. And we did that for the uh, Pasadena powwow was about 23 years and the Santa Fe Springs powwow was I think about 19 years. Um, and so they just kind of role modeled uh, like involvement. And uh, I ended up for a lot of reasons, um, I, going to school and, and trying hard at it for a while and, and uh, just met people along the way that uh, kind of, I, I kept like, I say like I've been falling upwards, uh, but I ended up uh, getting involved uh, within uh, research. And then um, I had good teachers um, and people that gave me good advice, tell me, you know, things that I should emphasize to be useful. And uh, uh, kind of got my first experience uh, doing uh, work with a tribal health agency out in Arizona. And then uh, since then, I've done uh, so much things, uh, working with so many good people, different partners, uh, NICWA, uh, the uh, uh, Oregon Indian Education Association, work with Confederated Tribes of Colville, Tonawatham Nation, San Carlos Apache Nation, uh, Cowlitz, uh, just a bunch of uh, folks doing good work. And I get to join them on that journey with like the little pocket of skills that I've tried to get good at. And uh, that's how I crossed paths with this uh, boss man over here, uh, Dr. Kroshu. Uh, he, um, uh, he and I met through the Alberta Indigenous Mentorship and Health Innovations Network, AIM High Network. Um, and uh, I got uh, I put on the evaluation team because I do a lot of program evaluations and stuff. And um, uh, when that sunsetted, uh, it, he asked me to uh, join him on that. IPHC PR, the Indigenous Primary Healthcare and Policy Research Network, which is the near network uh, for our province. And amongst the many things that that network does, um, one of them, uh, Lindsay likes to create work. You know, he loves it. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, one of his ideas, he got this, uh, this grant funding to put together a podcast um, with the intention of having health conversations that were you know, accessible and and uh, weren't all loaded up with jargon, weren't lecture style format, you know, trying, I guess like, and, and then also trying to capture a, um, a uh, an idea of health, uh, promote well-being in a way that was more aligned with indigenous perspectives. And, and so that uh, that podcast, the KIT uh, podcast, uh, call it, we call it Keeping It Together. Uh, and then the acronym being KIT, like your first aid kit, something like that. Um, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's what we're, I guess we're here to plug a little bit. Lindsay, is that right? Can I hand the mic over to you? Thanks, Adam. Um, so what's the question? <laughs> Introduce myself. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, <laughs> I know who you I, are. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure that out myself <laughs> and, and all of this work. 
Uh, but I just wanted to plug Adam's nickname is Bunny. Now that you mentioned that uh, you had a, uh, you come from the land of the rabbit. Yep. <laughs> yep. Adam's nickname is Bunny because he hops along, hops along on the drums. And if you're walking with him, he kind of skips along like a little kid. <laughs> so we all call him Bunny. Nice, nice. <laughs> well, welcome, Bunny. <laughs> uh, this, uh... Good to see you again, Bunny. It, it, this is a special occasion, uh, Michelle. You just participated in a Blackfoot naming ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hysterical. At least, at least the unofficial ones, the unofficial, yeah. unsanctioned, <laughs> unsanctioned ones. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is my first time knowing about it. You know, I guess you've been referring to me this way behind my back this whole time. <laughs> I, I only i only like sort of remembered because i have troubles with with uh remembering because i have so much work to do so i just recall <laughs> oh yes bunny is your nickname we've been all calling you that for the last four years <laughs> uh, but okay um so my intro uh so <laughs> I, I know my my thing says linden uh, it's my legal name um my, my name is Lindsay, and why is it Lyndon? Uh, the uh, I maybe the nurse at the time who wrote down the name didn't appreciate Lindsay, or or figured it Lyndon was a better name, or maybe he or she had a family member named Lyndon and wanted to just like perpetuate that name, but it was like a miss a, a typo of something on my birth certificate, oh my and I God, never bothered so to get funny. it changed. <laughs> never bothered to get it changed and 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 it just messes people up all the time and i just like it that it messes people up because i say yeah my my name is Lindsay, and you know i grew up with a a name that in canada has turned to be a girl's name but anytime i meet, meet somebody from um from uh scotland they say that's not a girl's name that's a solid man's name right and they like they're furious that north america it's turned into a girl's name so i had to like uh grow up with this kind of girlish name which kind of like made me a bit of a uh i don't know if it made me tough or not um <laughs> but i think I had it to made you no. tough i think a boy <laughs> named sue is coming to mind and johnny cash right now <laughs> yeah i was i was trying to lead to that i was trying to lead to that um anyway so Lindsay, Lindsay is uh my uh given name from my mom and dad um apparently it was a, a a local farmer rancher who was very close to my dad that he says I want to have my son named after he must have been had some sort of I don't know why he's named Lindsay anyway so I'm Lindsay uh Kroshu. I'm from the Pagani Nation um on my dad's side my mom is from Sixka Nation so I grew up in southern Alberta connecting across each of the reserves my my uh family is big and broad all over each of the reserves on all of the blackfoot tribes as well as my mom's from satana um uh she was a a, a whitney and so i grew up uh just connecting with all my family and friends and ceremony and all that stuff but not all all of the all of the family sort of sort of experiences of that is kind of what i lived um, I, uh, I'm a family doctor now. I decided that medicine seemed to be a, was my, my pathway from an early age, um, uh, in grade nine, when I had a friend who said, Lindsay, you, you seem to be like, you seem to be kind of smart. Maybe you should think about doing something like a, being a doctor. And I thought, yeah, oh, well, it's a good idea. So, um, so that was a, an inspiration from a friend that saw something in me that I didn't see, um, but then it became a, a goal over the course of many years. So, uh, so I'm a doctor. Um, I, I do. Uh, I still do a bit of clinic uh, work downtown at the Elbow River Healing Lodge on uh, one day a week. Um, it is a clinic that I developed many, many, many years ago. Um, and now it's a, it's a, I think it's a special place. Um, but not big enough, and needs we need to have more of them. And um, mostly, I'm I'm an academic, so I do professor type work at the medical school, helping people to comprehend and understand um, this stuff. So lots of teaching and learning. Uh, and part of that role is lots of research, and and the research brings me into exploring amazing um, terrains of knowledge, which is a 
privilege, right? It's it's such a privilege to be able to 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 engage and see how we think and the the knowledge that we that we come to and create knowledge with with many people. Bunny is one of those that I I like to create knowledge with. That's you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> we see him shaking his head. He's like, "Oh my god, this is sticking." <laughs> uh, yeah, so I so do some a uh, bunch of research, um, uh, all focused on indigenous health. Um, Adam went, called out one of the ones that is one of the big ones, uh, a, 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 a indigenous primary health care and policy research network, which is I, I think is a big deal because its the whole intention is to help us to transform our healthcare system primary healthcare system to be safer and higher quality for us as Indigenous people and, and realize that we bring um, some pretty interesting and important and, and groundbreaking knowledge to the table of healthcare. And, um, and we're going to show that over the next 15 years. So anyway, so that's kind of the stuff I do. I'm also an assistant dean in the medical school, helping the medical school to be better, right? Uh, policy and getting, you know, better programs and yeah. um, supporting people to to meeting other leaders within the medical school to just just do a better job because as an institution we, we need to and um, and that's my job is to help that out so that's awesome that's, that's what I do oh well I think you're both amazing and we haven't even gotten started yet so I, I want to thank you both for the work you do in community every single day I can't imagine how exhausting it must be at times dealing with some of these very uh, colonial institutions so know from the bottom of my heart to you I really respect and appreciate the work that you're doing every day and uh, I are ironically I actually grew up with Dina Henshaw and uh, during at the start of the pandemic we had um this, this meeting where some Indigenous people were getting together, et cetera, et cetera. And it was so painfully clear that uh, the work that folks like Esther Tailfeathers yourself um, had done, that it was given to her in paper, but she didn't really understand it. And I was sad because I'm like, you, this was your first outreach to the Indigenous community because she didn't know how to use proper language or nothing, right? So I was I was sad for her and her colleagues that she was still way over here on understanding Indigenous people, talking to us, et cetera. But knowing that you, Esther, uh, Adam, so many people doing great work behind the scenes, um, James McCocus, I think of him too, uh, you know, I, I just wish you all knew how much I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart because I went to Lethbridge for a short period of time. No family doctors. If it wasn't for the Alberta Virtual Indigenous Care, like I, I would have been in a lot of trouble. So uh, just grateful from the bottom of my heart to you both for the work you do every single day, along with all of our Indigenous academics and, uh, and doctors doing this great work. But the reason why you're both on here really is to promote keeping it together. And for folks who listened to my last podcast, they were tough ones. So I think it's really important the work you're doing. What, what was the you know history of making this? What are some things that you did that you're really proud of about it? And, and just making sure that we can prom cross promote this podcast for basically indigenous people to be going towards in a good way for mental health, physical health, et cetera. So I don't know, Adam, if you wanna start, a for Adam. Well, um, you know, like uh, uh, when you, you're like a kid in the room and all the do adults talk serious. Uh, that's what I do most of the time. I hang out while Lindsay spreads the good word. I, uh, I don't want to speak on his behalf. Uh, uh, Lindsay, why did you start this podcast? We have uh, um, episode uh, is it episode zero. Uh, maybe we can throw that in, in the link too, because there's a, a kind of a, a wordy um, definition on there. Uh, what was your motivation? Maybe a little bit more succinct than that last time. Oh, you're deflecting the question, Adam. <laughs> I'll answer then. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we have a lot of stories of strengths and that, that if we get a chance to share them, we uh, can, can learn from it. 
we can be inspired by other people's journeys and and see ourselves in those journeys or see ourselves ourselves uh, participating in in pathways that maybe we couldn't see before because things can be very cloudy in our lives just like i said i i in grade nine when my friend said Lindsay, you got something happening and i said thanks because i didn't see it and she says you got something going on and mm -hmm. And then it inspired me. I'm, I'm just hoping that um, that the more of us who say, here's something that's going on, maybe it's something that you could do as well. That's all this is about. It's it's about shifting. She was talking about your uh, tight pants, though. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, let me let me go change those. Now. Like kind of, I'm been wearing ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since great time. <laughs> those are pretty tight pants considering I was rail thin and now not so much mm. <laughs> as you, as you know, <laughs> um, um, it's, it's about sharing stories, right? Um, so we, you know, yes, we, we endure a lot of hardships and, and knowing how, how to best endure those things, how to best um, make sense of complex things and hard things. That's, that's all part of life's journey. Um, but we also do things that really connect us and, and, and make sense of it that we can celebrate all at the same time. Um, I, I, uh, the idea was that we carry a lot of burden, right? And, um, but, and, um, and often we, uh, that if you have a backpack of things to the, go out to the bush, I, I don't want to be carrying a hundred pounds of stuff I don't need. <laughs> I, want to, I want to carry a bunch of things like a good knife, uh, some rope, some food, some water, um, something that'll help me to stay warm, right? Um, something that I call hostess, right? So if, if, um, if we can like, um, support ourselves to hey these are some things that we can carry and maybe we don't need to carry all of these at once but these are this is a this is a selection of things that we can tap into and and understand and be well maybe maybe it'll be helpful right because if um it's all about sharing and and mentoring each other and stories of strengths that that inspire us so that's the that's the scoop of this podcast kind of in a nutshell Oh, that's great. That's exactly what we want to show. And Adam doing the great work in the chat box, giving me the link to episode zero. So I'm just going to share my screen here so that uh, folks who are following us on YouTube, this is really specific to you um, because this is their YouTube channel. And so I'm just going to share the sound and we're going to share for folks uh, who are just listening to the podcast, keeping it together, episode zero. YouTube I have um, six subscribers now because I just subscribed. So All let's right. put this to play. <laughs> um. Excellent music choice, by the way. <laughs> oh, these are great right, graphics. And Hi, everyone. And we welcome watch to our podcast. And I'm right. joined by <laughs> folks to hear that great music yeah. and uh, go from there. <laughs> I think it's coming out pretty good. Yeah, right on. That's good. Now I got to figure out how to quit sharing my screen. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> technical issues here. Okay, stop sharing. That, there that was Adam on the drums, by the way. <laughs> was that uh, was that one of our our recordings? Yep. And that's uh, I think I'm on guitar there, Adam, on, and uh, Cosm's on bass, mm. or vice versa. Yeah, I thought you were on base for that one, but uh, it's hard to remember now. Yeah. Anyway, we we did that ad hoc recording in the basement. That is so fun. I can't believe you all just do that too now, too. It's like it's not enough. You're fighting racism, colonialism, you know, giving and supporting health, mental health. No, we're, we're going to have a band and we're going to make a podcast. <laughs> I that's think that's awesome. how you have to do it. I, yeah. I was I recall I was at a conference, a youth conference when I was a youth. I never was a youth, eh? I just kind of popped out as an old born man. old. <laughs> I was I was in medical school, so I was young at the time. And I was at a an indigenous youth conference and giving talks. And it was it was like I, I recall I brought my guitar and I said, This is how we how we heal. And it was like everybody cheered. Um, but it's true. Um, yeah, it's it's the music and how we connect with, um, uh, you know, stories and and music. I mean, it's part of our traditions. Uh, like, it's not real unless there's a song connected to it, right? So anyway, kid is real because we have a song connected to it, right, Adam? <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> and and he wore his bunny ears on the day we were Dude, recording. You're gonna get me uh like nicknames that people are gonna call me that. And normally I'd be okay with it. Uh, but I I do have like an, an ex who had that same nickname. Uh and so like uh <laughs> I don't want to steal it, you know. <laughs> and this, folks, is what happens when you have two uncles and an auntie getting together, chatting about absolutely something important. <laughs> I triggered everybody by being a hair person. It's so funny, though, because it's like if if you told me to go get a, a bunny or a hair, I would not know what to do. I just look at it with side eye like, ah, you were stolen from me. <laughs> mm. So funny. So you've also given me episode uh, one and two. So I'm, I'm going to throw it out there for folks to see because we absolutely want to encourage uh, what you're promoting here. And uh, just grateful that you both wanted to talk about um, this on a podcast. So what can we expect from episode zero, one and two? Uh, zero is the is the trailer. Um, I didn't mean to uh, interrupt it. Uh, you know, it's it's a fun video, but it, it's just meant to answer that same question. That's why it's not technically an episode. It's the shortest of all of them. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, we just kind of explore like uh, uh, why we think that the podcast is in, in, important in our own ways. And then for Lindsay, like why, you know, uh, he had that, um, that vision to create it. Uh, whereas um, episode one and two, uh, that's where we start doing the stuff, you know, and, and we've been learning along the way. Originally, we were going to do um, like each episode was split into like three parts where there was an interview um, either with one of us or a couple of us or a whole group of us and then uh, a, bit, a second video where we would do the thing that that person did to keep it together like we would try it out uh, and then there'd be like a third video where like the group would like reflect on um, like some of the research that was like supportive of those things and, and our own interpretation of like how you know I don't know how it made us feel like what we what we got from it that type of deal episode one is was is it Pam Roach and she's doing beating so like I think there's going to be a follow-up episode uh with that because we all sat in a room uh over at uh um family, family medicine what's what's that uh what's that room called again oh, we've got the nice couch in there it's called the indigenous hub um so we have a, a room uh sort of a eight back so we can smudge and do ceremony um a space for uh, uh indigenous doings uh, for the indigenous staff and students um so we yeah we have a buffalo rock down it's a nice area to like uh to gather and share and uh, like i say have ceremony but we did have we did um record a an episode in there on beading which is a great place to bead mm -hmm. awesome yeah. and the second one is with wyatt c lewis right uh musician um buddy Lindsay's. talk about music on that one uh just to throw it out there um because uh uh not only you know we did throw we did uh or Lindsay mentioned that uh, we recorded that uh, that initial song and and I think that when we have transitions and all that stuff we recorded all those little sound bites uh but uh we were just in in Ottawa uh, I'm just going to share this story because uh, uh I think it's a good one we were just in Ottawa and uh uh, I had heard about this before, and if you like Google Lindsay, like you'll find it. Like it's in like these little newsletter type of things here and there. Like, but uh, um, uh, Jeff Reading walked up, and, and these guys have been you know working in Indigenous health stuff for thirty years, and he goes, "Oh, I remember uh, meeting Lindsay when he was really young, and uh, he was everyone knew him as the guitar playing traveling doctor because uh, he'd go on like these rural rotations, right, Lindsay? Isn't this true?" And everywhere he'd go, bring this guitar, and you know, it's like uh, uh, you might do a bunch of medicine stuff during the day, but then break the guitar out, hang out with folks, jamming. And I remember uh, Jeff Regan saying, uh, uh, "I remember uh, Lindsay playing uh, to like a bunch of kids uh, that had had. Um, I don't remember what their uh, what their uh, uh, reason for all being in the same room together with, but I guess the kids were." Uh, you know, hard to get attention with, and and uh, Lindsay played guitar, and all these kids came together, and and uh, you know he's got a good testimony, yeah. traveling band, uh, rambling man, whatever. He, what is it? <laughs> That's so fun. I'm so glad. That makes me happy because I think uh, 
you know, you just want to see somebody who's who's not just like a, a stiff fellow, but somebody who's cool. Well, I didn't and... say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's too quick there. <laughs> Lindsay, do you want to chime in here at all? Adam is quick to say that I'm, even though I play guitar, I'm not really that cool. But, um, <laughs> he's still okay to hang out with me because he's he hopes for the best. He's a hopeful bunny. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't say I was cool either. You know, and misery loves company. Oh, yeah, right. It is true. <laughs> All of those accounts are true. We hang out, make uh, nerd jokes. That's Thinking good, we're cool. Though. That, that, that's the whole point of life, I tell you. What does make you happy? What are you excited about and, and the upcoming projects you're working on? Adam, what are your thoughts? Um, well, you know, I, uh, um, we all do like a lot of real mundane activities. I'm, I'm in the Department of Psychology. Um, my uh, my uh, education, uh, my, my uh, graduate education is in a subfield of psychology. Uh, it's called industrial organizational psychology. If um, everybody, when they hear psychology, they think clinical, right? Like it's just part of the pop culture. You watch Law and Order or something, right? You're going to see uh, psychologists always somebody like interpreting, you know, how they're, oh, it was because of their relationship with their family, you know? And, and then it's like, that's why, you know? And, and, and so when people hear psychologists, they do one of two things. Uh, they either stop talking to you because they think you're going to psychoanalyze them or they start talking to you more, hoping that you'll psychoanalyze them. And, and neither one of them is a good, uh, uh, <laughs> a good uh, uh, shift to the conversation. So I, I, I uh, tough on the dating scene too. Holy. <laughs> nah, no, nah, I'm not on the dating scene. I don't got to worry about that. Nice. Uh, but uh, the, um, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, industrial psychology. So, so if you look at um, like the American Psychological Association, they divide psychology into fifty-four different divisions. Uh, each division's got its own like conferences and its own um, journals that they populate, and their own listservs and their own heroes of scholarship or whatever. And of those fifty-four, there's you know there's a bunch of them that overlap, and people are usually cross over between a, two or three of them. Uh, but that one that I'm in, Division 14, just to give you the kind of example of the enormity of it, like that that Division 14 has 28 subfields, I think, something like that. So like I spent my PhD years trying to get mediocre at like two of those subfields. So it's just like this gigantic uh, thing sure. and uh, where I've kind of uh, located myself um, within that. Uh, uh, it, it it didn't really have a space for like indigenous stuff in my in my opinion and and uh, and it's part of the reason why I'm up here and why I'm so grateful to be here because uh, working down uh, in the, in the states the political will is not such to where you uh, it's 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 just really hard to get a room it's hard to get staff it's hard to get funding it's, it's hard to get initiatives going and I'm embarrassed to say it uh, but uh, when I first got here. I felt like I was kind of institutionalized, uh, uh, like uh, I, I wasn't hip with the possibilities. Uh, like uh, I was still, <laughs> this is going to sound bad, but I was still like uh, in a meeting, somebody would say, well, listen, it needs to be like culturally integrated or culturally responsive. And I'd be like, hey, man, be careful how bold you are about saying that they're going to take the, the funding away, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know we end up our own worst gatekeepers sometimes, don't we? I hear you. I, I, I'm guilty of this too. So I wish we, I knew how to navigate these systems so that we could just be authentically ourselves and try to figure out how to change these systems so that they are authentically Indigenous. And so I, I get what you're saying. I get how hard it is to try to navigate all this. Holy. Yeah. Uh, and so it's really cool for me to see when things kind of manifest, like all these. And so like uh, the other week, because you got to do like a lot of the mundane stuff, right? Like you got to sit behind the computer and write the grant or analyze the data or do the grades or whatever. Um, but like the launch that we had like this last week, this conversation that we're having right now, mm -hmm. uh, Lindsay and I will be talking at the Oregon Health and Science University. Sure. I think next, is it next week? Um, and so we're going to be talking about stuff that we're doing. And I think that it's all pretty badass. Like uh, we're use, utilizing these 
like processes of research and working within these institutions, but I like to think that if we're trying to do it in a smart way. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, an old mentor of mine, uh, his name is uh, Cornell Paywardy, he's a Kiowa Comanche dude. Uh, he goes, you know, you got to have a little bit of trickster uh, in, in you, you know, you, you got to be thinking all the time. So uh, that that's fun uh, to me, like to get to hang out uh, and you still get to call it work, but you're having fun. Yeah, no, I think that's part of the joy that we have to heal from too. I I don't know. Um, would, would you like to chime in here at all, Lyndon, about some upcoming projects that you might be excited about too? Sure. <clears throat> well, well, this this kid podcast is kind of an ongoing, exciting thing because it reflects just um, a, a group of people who are special, who are inspired by each other, who who want to like um, just share the word interview like lots of lots of people and 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 then dig in as, as to like what does this mean for for being well and how can we help support each other yeah. so it's really celebrating the idea and celebrating uh the work and celebrating each other um so it's, it's very special it's very fun um it's kind of a highlight of the week of the week when we when we chat um but all the work i i, I try to do work that um is special mm -hmm. And and find meaning in the work as well, because I think that's always part of the challenge. Um, not everything is like you know, rock, you know, playing rock and roll music and yeah. and singing and all that kind of stuff. Even though I'd like to do that, but and and even in even in our podcasts, the, even the most mundane thing is special, right? <clears throat> because if you if you see if you see beauty and creativity and promise. Um, in in the world and in the, in the smallest thing you can take that to wherever you go so um my all of my projects i i have i, I see specialness within it and and find celebration and celebrate people in that process so um I, but i think truly the ability to engage like i said earlier with the knowledge and and learn and explore and flow um creates um um such wellness within me that i like i say is is a is a is a privilege that i i just hope to share with the rest of the world right mm -hmm. um so i i do work within within diabetes i i i do work within um dementia i like i say i do work within um health um, primary health care systems they all they all have really amazing good stuff like we're asking critical questions of of the world of how do we make it better what's what's out there what how do we how do we translate that so everybody else sort of uh, gets the benefit how do we shift clinical care how do we um help doctors to see different ways of knowing so that they can be better and how do we how do we evaluate and show the outcomes of this so those are all long term questions that that i think that the important part is how do we help other how do i help other people to to see the beauty of it and to be like say oh that's so that's pretty awesome um let's 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 keep pushing it right it's like how do we dream big and uh and i think i can be notorious for creating these projects and and dreaming up some ideas um and there's certain people that i know that are, are, are called dream killers but uh, <laughs> But uh, I've been stymieing those people these days. Hey, Adam. You know, uh, the ideas are 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 good. And I'm not going to say the ideas aren't good, you know, but it, I, I think it's because it's you that people are willing to try them out. Uh, I uh, I do. I am I'm known uh, for killing dreams. It's something I got from my mom. Uh, and, you know, uh, if you start telling me your aspirations, I might uh, just start crapping all over it. Not because I want to. It's just like this thing, you know, like it comes up. Maybe it's part of, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, some uh, uh, some past uh, uh, um, trauma. But I like to think about it like, uh, you know, it, it helps to like refine. You only really go through with ideas that you really think are, are worthwhile. Uh, it keeps you from uh, joining fads and stuff, you know, just because it's popular. Uh, so, you, you know, sometimes you got to you gotta kill dreams sometimes, you know, but I, I understand that that's debatable and I don't want to like 
be a role model in that way. <laughs> so, so in our in our work together, um, Adam and I identified uh, six domains of mentorship. Mostly Adam identified these things. I was just there for the ride. But one of those domains was criticality, right? Uh, understanding like the nature of the knowledge and and understanding how Western ideas as well as Indigenous ideas are uh, they're all in a relationship. And and so that how do we help? Um, you know, medical indigenous um, learners who who want to be researchers to to navigate this land of complexity and criticality was one of those things so adam speaks from this lens of criticality yeah. and and it's really important for us as as all people including indigenous people to have like a high degree of like okay where does this knowledge really come from what's truly what are people truly saying underneath that 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 facade of 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 uh, that sugar coating. Let's get to the bottom of this. So I think Adam is 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 describing a skill that we all need to have. I'm just bugging him, uh, uh, teasing him about his degree of criticality. I think uh, the uh, the institutional organizational psychology sort of realm has created this high degree of critical thinking, and in, in uh, which I'd fully appreciate. Um, and that's what I. That's what I really want, right? I, I want us as Indigenous people to have a high degree of criticality of the world so that we can say, yeah, I get it. I also sort of question it, right? Yeah. And 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 it's okay because I need to make sense of it. And 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 if you can, if you feel empowered as a person to say, hey, wait a second, right? Whether it's in the moment or afterwards, hey, wait a second, something there doesn't jive with me go with it right but if 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 we don't instill those skills for criticality in all of our um in all of us as indigenous people and, and in indigenous youth um we'll go through life without seeing the possibilities or saying that possibility might not be the best possibility for me or it needs to be shifted in a way that makes it better for me as an indigenous person so criticality is like it's super important and and that's part of this podcast is is um is here's this here's a space here's something and and let's dig into it let's look at it from um multiple lenses of knowledge right because mm. i think that we have to have that fluidity of as human beings and as indigenous people to see it from here there's multiple indigenous lenses to see this from there's multiple um sort of social sciences lenses to understand this from there's a popular lens there's a pop psychology lens there's so much knowledge out there that that informs this. Um, if I can, if uh, if we can uh, look at it from many facets all at once and instill criticality, um, it's a good thing in my books. So um, mm -hmm. anyway, that's how we connect that. Adam's uh, uh, tendencies <laughs> for killing people's dreams to to uh, to good use. Well, you know, <laughs> I I think uh, um, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. You know, because. Uh, I, one time I TA'd for this forensic psychology class and uh, the professor, uh, he goes, you know, uh, in, in American uh, legal model, it's it's an antagonistic model. I think that's what he called it. It's, a, it's an antagonistic model of the truth. And so the belief is that you got one lawyer saying it's guilty, one lawyer saying it's innocent. And the uh, assumption is, is that they're both equally resourced, equally trained, uh, that they'll do their best job to argue that point of view and then the truth will be someplace in the middle, right? Um, but part of the reason why that works is because there's a jury or a judge that says at the end, okay, this is who wins, right? And like in, in popular discourse, it's actually polarizing to think about it from an antagonistic model. Uh, and so, I, you know, I think there is like a relational way uh, to consider, you know, Lindsay was saying all the different multiple lenses um, and we don't want to set ourselves up for failure or uh, absorb thinking um you know that that um like maybe it endor maybe it uses critical theory let's say but citing somebody's critical theory is not the same thing as critical thinking so you know maybe um maybe that dream killing um maybe at the end i'm convinced i'm like actually yeah that's a good dream go ahead with it but i had to kill, try to kill it first and then, and then the idea, like, it's like, okay, uh, we've we've explored that strain of thought, right? We've thought about it from that perspective, and not considering it, how does that make you wiser? You know, like, uh, yeah, um, we're having these kind of conversations within the university. I get the chance to be around a lot of good people doing a lot of good work. Um, uh, the work I do with uh, with Lindsay is like a, a part of 
it's just like one thing that our lab has a, a bunch of different projects and I'm involved with other things, different places within and outside the university. Um, you know, but there's a lot of, I don't want to say uh, tension, but at least conversations going around about like how, like uh, at our university, we have the top of top, it's the indigenous strategy, indigenous initiative, if you want to say, and it's this giant university kind of commitment to partnership and, and a bunch of things. You can check it out on the website. Uh, but how does that thing relate to like EDI, equity, diversity, and inclusion movements, which definitely are friendly to like indigenous speakers and indigenous events and, and stuff like that, but is it the same vision? And there's, you know, there's a way that um, EDI initiatives and stuff get pushed forward. Uh, they're still very much part of, I don't know, like corporate or... Uh, they're colonial. I, yeah, I know yeah. I know what you're saying, because uh, one of the things that bother me, is, um, and I, I heard a, another person say, it's like, uh, once upon a time, we had the multicultural umbrella, and Indigenous were kind of lumped in there. And um, pr the problem with, you know, um, I call it die, because it's, you know, <laughs> die, diversity, inclusion, and equity, these poor folks who do this work, like, you, it's like, it slowly kills your, your soul. But because it's not from a decolonial lens, it actually is missing it because it's not from a treaty. It's not from the idea of reconciliation, right? It's just an idea of diversity and inclusion. So they're missing the whole whole bigger picture here that we need to include. So I feel you on that. It, it's tough listening to it sometimes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, is it is a tough pain in the butt as well. Um, Hence the keeping it together celebration of, of things that we do and know and engage with that um, that help to shift the tides, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so I think we have to have a balance in our in our lives around. Um, there's a lot of structural and and understanding inequity and colonization and how through many pathways that operate through resource disparities interpersonal from within our communities to with relationships within general society that uh, uh, as well as uh, relationships with systems right that that perpetuate inequity we got to understand those so, so I'm, I'm saying as indigenous people we have a big task on our hands to like make sense of and we have to sort of help unfortunately help mainstream society make sense of it all at the same time so we have a big load on our shoulders yes. right and and the more that we understand these things as indigenous peoples and the more that we have a voice and have that criticality of being able to say hey wait a second that's not right um the more we can foster change and and it's helpful for us as individuals um I, I figure we need we also need the celebration. Right? Yeah. We need to have the guitar playing in there. Yeah. We need to have like so in our in our first three episodes, we have uh we have music as medicine with Wyatt C. Lewis and talking about music. And and I would love to have more more episodes on on the healing power of music and looking at on looking at it from an indigenous lens, looking at it from a science lens, so that you say you know, like, oh wow, that's really interesting. Like just even singing a song creates this wellness in your life. Maybe we can all just sing songs regularly or writing a song or or yeah. playing guitar or learning an instrument. There's so many pathways to wellness that um, that we can celebrate these possibilities while we're still working through the complex hardness the, of it all. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the episodes. Pam Roach, who who is a who is a is a, a faculty member in family medicine, um, who is a close colleague and friend. Like we said, she she's talking about beating. And she worked through beating all the time through COVID to like make sense of it. But it's like this place of of integration that's reflection. It, it then um, celebrates indigeneity, her 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 understanding of herself and the world as an indigenous woman, and and the culture from where she's coming from, where she's the the stories of the beating, the colors, all that kind of stuff, um, the 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 possibility of beating, and knowing that we all could probably benefit from settling in and doing like my had seen my grandma and my mom and all that stuff over mm -hmm. over the years of how and when I was a kid and beating with them and how awesome I felt but life now is so busy I, I don't have that chance to sit down and beat and teach my my kids to beat but I, I, I'd love to have that time but just having a chance to engage in that conversation with Dr. Roach and and having a chance for us to 
also have a conversation at our launch party, which we had last week. Um, those are things that might inspire people. And, and the last one of our three um, uh, our three initial podcasts um, is Jarrett, two young men who uh, as a as an indigenous filmmaker who who is working with kids and is found at this Nakota AV club that helps kids to like see, like I'm saying here, see some possibilities in the world through through video making and, and telling stories because stories and music, all those things are are really important for us. So these are celebrations at the same time. And these specific celebrations are all of them, I would say, help us to make sense of that hard complexity. Um, and these things aren't soft. These things are like com complex in what we do. The act of making music, the act of going to ceremony, the act of making a movie, those are all complex tasks that, mm -hmm. that bring you such wellness. And, and for these people to talk about, yeah, this is what kept me together through this, this COVID era, the era that was like super hard on all of us. Um, yeah. These are lessons that I think that um, taking forward, knowing that COVID is a context, but colonization is a bigger ongoing context. Mm -hmm. we, we we have a big task at hand. And like I say, the, 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 the metaphor here, here is, yeah, we got a lot of load to carry, but what do you want to put in there to keep you going, right? Um, yeah me a bit of a ukulele or guitar you know all that kind of stuff is really helpful um bologna sandwich <laughs> fried bologna sandwich yeah, yeah, yeah i think i got my spam still i gotta spam eat spam so. yeah. i have some spam in the cupboard that i've been trying to, to like pull out to say hey kids you should try this out but um i just like keep forgetting about it hopefully it doesn't expire you know it's that it... doctor in you it's not going to expire you get, it's that doctor in you uh <laughs> that uh you're like man should i slide a bottle of heart pressure or heart blood pressure medicine over at the same time it's a uh, 110 percent daily need of sodium in every bite <laughs> oh yeah. my god yes you know what just i chop it up put it with my uh hash browns and and scrambled eggs and it's like perfect oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah my no. heart doctor said i had to uh cut back on sugars and and such so no no bannock or, or fry bread for me but uh, uh, yeah, but I, I can eat all of the, uh, you know, meat. All the want. you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. I'm so glad you guys talked about joy. Um, one of the things I try to kind of touch base with my family is uh, what, what was your highlight of the day? Just to make sure that there was something that made you laugh. And sometimes it's a stupid TikTok, uh, ukulele playing TikTok for that matter, but at least it's something that brought joy. And I think that's why it's so important to do that. Um, I feel like I'm doing that critical thought every day on my Twitter. So <laughs> I don't know if everybody appreciates it, but I don't speak for all indigenous, but I really love the points that you guys were making about um, all the indigenous perspectives on a certain topic, because um, part of the reason why I have this podcast, and it's a weekly podcast, is to talk about uh, things that have happened in a week that mainstream med media, like here was the mark and they missed it. It's way over there. So, <laughs> you know, having that authentic um, conversation about things, I think is so important for us and to be critical about what we've seen. But uh, I, I know for us, it's easy to, to uh, spark joy. I really love that uh, Rutherford Falls because, uh, you know, they're always making jokes. There was a Last of Us episode and I guess like an auntie and uncle were on there just like cracking jokes like, oh, you lost, you need a map and, you know, wearing their beaded earrings in the middle of an apocalypse because this is our post-apocalypse for <laughs> colonization too. So <laughs> ongoing, I should say, no, it's not, it's not done. <laughs> So, so I really appreciate both of you explaining what your podcast is about, finding those moments of joy, but also talking about, like you said, very complex ideas and bringing it together so that folks can unpack together. We have to do this together. I, I wish there were more community care circles. I wish there was a way to do that, but it's so hard in this urban economic setting sometimes. So I think this is such a great medium that you both created. And I'm really seeing, um, it took me a long time to see a podcast as art, but now mm -hmm. I, I see it. And so I, I have a hard time identifying as an artist, but as a podcast host and a political commentator, I just feel like I'm authentically being indigenous. That's all. <laughs> yeah. That's so do cool. you have any lasting things you want to add? Um, well, I guess check it out. Um, I think there's lots of uh, lots of there'll be lots of good stuff 
um, coming up. And I think there's there are many, many other sort of uh, offerings you could you could like tap into that uh, our community has uh, has is is providing. So so poke around in the in the media and, and see what you can see. Um, I, I think I think most importantly is having that criticality, but also harnessing that criticality to the possibility, right? The possibility of change, whether it's for you, your family, community, whatever. Like all, all these things are, are are I think if we can see it as as something that can help us to make a shift in the world, that's good. I I think criticality versus criticisms that grounds us into like this negativity into and then into inaction is is problematic. Um and I, I think criticality and and creativity to inspire us to to see possibilities of doing of doing because we got to be doing otherwise yes. we just kind of stagnate yeah. right um so let's all just do and uh be be well in the doing because the doing makes us well that's kind of a funny play on things but if we don't do we don't be well but in the doing it makes you well and whatever you do celebrate it right there's nice. they're all good is this a plug <laughs> anyway. for productivity is this a reminder? <laughs> is this a human doing thing? Are we talking toxic positivity? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, he's just he just like coded uh, a whole message uh, right now, trying to remind me to return this form. I have to sign form A. <laughs> I was I was trying to get you to like return that uh, those uh, that sports equipment that I lent you like five years ago. I thought it's yet I could keep that jock strap. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, you could keep it. <laughs> not at I don't know if you want it back anymore anyway. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> I gotta no. put it on the dishwasher on the pots and pans setting. <laughs> I don't want to have dishes at your house for a while, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'll run it twice afterwards empty. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, thank you both. Thank you, doctors, for coming on. I can't believe I had two doctors at the same time. That's awesome. And by the way, Pam Roach has been on this podcast, so she is a past guest that we've been lucky enough to have. So hopefully if folks folks are listening, first of all, check out Keeping It Together podcast, and then you can go back into my, my archive and, and listen to Pam, Dr. Pamela Roach as well. And uh, yeah, thank you both for being on. I'm going to do my exit now, and you two are welcome to chime in anytime and make your you know ridiculous jokes, whether we're talking jock straps or bunnies, either or. That's what I might name this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the episode uh, bunnies and bunnies in in the uh, jock straps. <laughs> That's like putting bad God, mental image. images in my head. Uh... I can't wait for you guys to share that. That's funny. <laughs> Right on. Oh, okay. So for folks who are listening and are non-Indigenous and are like, oh my God, I have so much work to do. No, you don't. You just have to join my book club. I, I run a book club every second uh, Monday of the month. Our next selection will be uh, chapters 11 of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women, Girls, and Two-Spirit. And we also have our Reconciliation Action Group. We're always looking for folks willing to help. Um, for example, the folks who countered the Law Society petition would be really great to get updates from you so we know what's happening in those circles. I'm really proud that this podcast has given solutions and cultural safety training or cultural first aid in all of them to create a safer space for Indigenous people of color, those with disabilities, and to us LGBTQ to speak. Thank you to author Cheryl Ward, Chelsea Branch, and Alicia Fritkin of heretohelp.bc.ca for what is Indigenous cultural safety and why I should care about it. There are so many different uh, resources out there. I'm just lucky enough to highlight and repeat one here for you. Uh, internalized racism or lateral violence is another form of violence indigenized, indigenous and marginalized people experience by the structure of racism imposed on these lands. RacialEquityTools.org by Donna Bevins has a great piece on what is internalized racism. So if you're really struggling with that, I recommend doing that because it helps take the power away. Do's and don'ts for bystander interventions by American Friends Service Committee. So if you go to AFSC.org, you can find some information about what to do if you were to see somebody being harassed on public transit or something like that. Indigenous people have been talking about our issues, sharing our traumas in reports, commissions, and public hearings, just so it's regularly disregarded. No more. Honor our words. Honor our treaties. 
listen to politicians and decision makers and their policies and platforms if they don't recognize marginalized in their budget with gender equity plus if they're cutting violence prevention programs uh, services Indigenous education, uterus health choices, gay straight alliances, lack of human rights for migrants, immigrants, folks with disabilities. Know that your vote to that party directly negatively impacts marginalized people. Demand that they implement the Truth and Reconciliation Commission 94 calls to action, the recommendations of the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples, the multiple reports about child welfare reform, uh, violence prevention, and now 231 calls to justice from the National Inquiry on missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit. In Alberta, the Kenny government created 113 pathways to justice, so all you blue vulgars should be holding your blue MLA to account on it. Follow the new Premier's Council on Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Work. Municipally, in Calgary, we have the White Goose Flying Report. Denying that report is a form of abuse, of abuse called gaslighting. Our people are experiencing extreme racism in the justice, educational, uh, health institutions with multiple reports that say the same thing. Demand change from these election platforms and politicians. If they don't understand colonialism, racism, privilege, sexism, they literally have zero business writing. This should be understood by everybody, but also beyond politics, community organizations, sports clubs, institutions, Google articles on how non-Indigenous Canadians can become allies. Stephanie Harp and I did an emergency podcast in the hopes we could reach our allies to write and do more on the crises we are facing. Uh, you can also go to aboriginalalert.ca and download that um, app that they have. There's a Missing Children Society app. Uh, demand for urgent action to protect the lives of Indigenous women, girls, two-spirit, and gender-diverse people experiencing homelessness report can be found at womenshomelessness.ca. If you know someone who is using substances, do not use alone. If you are using alone, you can make a safety plan with the National Overdose Response Service at 888-688-NORS, uh, or you can download two apps, the Brave or the Doors app. Uh, if you're experiencing emotional distress after anything we talked about today and need to talk, you can call the First Nation and Inuit Hope for Wellness Helpline at 866 or sorry, 855-242-3310. It's open 24 hours, seven days a week. And you can also go to their website, hopeforwellness.ca, where they have a little text option. Uh, if more related to missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit, you can go to 844-413-6649. And for non-Indigenous, there's always a functioning 211 in your area, or you can go to 866 4 Five six forty five sixty six. You can go to crisisservicecanada.ca. You can also, if you're a 60 Scoop survivor, contact the 60 Scoop Indigenous Society of Alberta at ssisa.ca. The following are two SLGBTQ plus community supports if that are available in most areas across Canada. You can go to lifevoice.ca for more. And the Trans Lifeline is 877-330-6366. The Trevor Project, 866-844-7386. And that's more for youth as well. Uh, Violence is my everyday reality. I started this um, podcast to really talk about everything that we need to talk about. And I, I really think my two guests really talked about the complexities, what it's like to be an Indigenous person and trying to navigate this world in, in a good way, but we're doing it. And every Indigenous generation has faced it. This is self-care, how I take my power back, how I speak um, without leadership shaming, gaslighting questions. Many people don't wanna hear Indigenous opinions, but wanna tell us theirs, even though they don't know anything about us or colonialism or the constant surveillance of our people, protests, vigils, and our rights. Um, it's unacceptable to say microaggressions anymore. We're, it's uh, Black History Month right now. And uh, I find the Black community so, shares so much information on why we shouldn't be even calling it microaggressions anymore. Learn about being trauma informed. Folks like me are dealing with internalized racism, gatekeepers, all sorts of things. And that's on top of the non-Indigenous. Inter internal and external racism is an everyday reality for many of us. Masi Cho to my ancestors, to my mommy, to my granny, to my aunties, my uncles, of what strength looks like through your example. I want to thank my dad for teaching me to be strong and blunt, my stepmom for showing me what a proud culture is through her Austrian roots and teaching me to be a proud Calgarian. And just through her, I am a second generation proud Calgarian. And thank you to my husband, Darcy, 
for Big Buffalo Rockman for being um, not just the editor and producer, but my husband and childhood friend, my father of our child. And he's been my support down this whole journey of the Red Robe, witnessing decades of racism and sexism. This will be the 30th year, actually, so literally three decades of it now. So, and to our child, child uh, Thunderpipe Nicholas Woman, we are blessed to learn from you daily. We are honored you chose us. You give me daily accountability to be a better and stronger person. And I hope my daughter and my family will be proud in the future of us trying to discuss these present day issues. My Patreon account is Native Calgarian where you can pledge and support. Thank you to my previous donors for showing your support. If you value listening or watching and can afford to give, thank you. To those who cannot afford to give, I'd love to hear from you at nativeyyc at gmail.com where you can send in your comments or questions. I also have a YouTube channel. You can go and subscribe. Please go subscribe to Keeping It Together podcast as well. Um, go to nativecalgarian.com for the latest podcasts and the pin posts on social media. And on my birthday, I put out, I'd like to go to Ottawa for May 4th. I will be going. Um, but if you want to help me with a one-time donation to run for the Indigenous Peoples Commission uh, female co-chair, you can donate there on my website. And I want to end by giving side eye to those Calgary rabbits. You're lucky I'm not your dish. And my beautiful cousin who was visiting once said, or you'd be in my dish. So thank you so much for listening. And thank you to my guests for joining us.